Hello and welcome again. In this video, we'll compute the discrete log in base uh, 23 of 31 and Z137 star. Now, uh, the way we're going to compute this is using the baby step giant step algorithm that we saw in the previous video. So if you haven't watched that video, then go ahead and watch it. So this makes more sense to you. Okay, the first thing I'm going to mention here is that uh, 137 is a prime number. And the reason that's important is because, uh, first of all, that group will be cyclic in the case this is a prime number. And also, I know exactly the elements that I can list them very easily. So it's the numbers from 1 uh, all the way to 136, which is 1 minus uh, um, this number here, minus 1. Also important to note that a 23 here is a generator of that group, which it is in this case. We can also double check that this is also a generator with the techniques we saw in previous videos. Now, the way we are doing discrete logs here is we are doing it for cyclic groups. That doesn't have to be the case. You can also do it for things that are not cyclic. This is called the general discrete logarithm problem. Uh, which I might talk a little bit later in this videos, but for now we're gonna do all in uh, cyclic groups All right, so let's uh, go ahead and do the Chang's baby step giant step method to do this If you recall from the previous video, the first thing I have to do is I have to compute this uh, uh, Number M which is the ceiling of the square root of phi of n when n here correspond to the n here of this group in my case is 137 now, 137 is a prime number, so phi of that, which is the function phi of Euler, is very easy to compute if it is a prime number, so it's just the number minus 1, which is what I have here. Now, you take the square root of that, and that gives you 11.6619, and the ceiling of that is, of course, uh, 12. So, I have to compute that number, so m is equal to 12. That was step number 1, and the baby step, giant step method, or algorithm. Now, the second part is the table that I talked about it in last video. Now, that table is a table of entries of xb, alpha to the xb. The alpha in our case is 23. That's the uh, problem we are solving. And this xb is bigger than or equal to 0 and less than m. But m in this our case is 12, which I already computed in step 1. So basically, this xb that is here is going to go around from 0 through 11. And I'm going to make a table here of uh, these uh, numbers. The first one xb and the second one 23 to the xb. So I'm going to have basically 12 of them, 12 pairs. I'm going to organize them in this table. So the table that you see there uh, is a table that I'm talking about. So this xb goes all from 0 to 1, 0, 1, all the way through 11. And then the one that is here is 23 to the xb. And remember, this is exponentiation modulo the group. And our group is z star 137. That's why I put modulo here and there. So 23 to the xb modulo 127. Now you have to fill out this table and put it down. Now, if you were doing this in the computer, of course, you will have to save uh, this uh, table that is here for later to for lookup later. So the first row is just numbers from 0 to 11, and the second row is uh, for every xb that you see here, the corresponding value, you put it in the second row. So let's say, for example, I'm looking at xb equals 3, which corresponds to this value here in the first row. The value for that one is 1, 11. And the reason for that is because that corresponds to this. It's going to be 23 to 3, which is the xb, and that's all modulo 127. If you actually go ahead and do this, this is going to give you 111. Now, in exactly the same way, you will have to uh, fill out all this table that is here, all the second row that of this table. So the first row is just uh, from 0 to 11. You don't have to compute anything there. The one that you have to compute something is the second row here. All right, there's a lot of computation, but it can be done. All right, this third step. The third step is the step where we have to use the standard Euclidean algorithm. And remember, what we have to do in the third step is I have to take my alpha to the minus m, which is exactly the same to alpha to the or the inverse of alpha all to the m. Now, alpha and m, I already know what they are. So alpha is just the generator, which is in this case 23, and m is 12. So basically, what I'm trying to compute is 
the inverse of 23 first and then I, I have to take to this power 12 which is modulo 137 okay so to compute the inverse of alpha which is the first thing I have to do it means the inverse of 23 is I have to remember that the GCD between those two numbers is 1 which it is and it always is because this alpha is an element of that Zn which is 137 the GCD between these two numbers is 1 so you're gonna go ahead and apply the Euclidean algorithm the extended Euclidean algorithm to get this equation the equation that says that you can get the greatest common divisor as a combination of the numbers that are here so in this case 23 times 6 plus 137 times negative 1 is equal to 1 and if you check this that's actually true so this coefficient, the coefficient of the alpha that is here, that's the alpha inverse. So alpha inverse in this case is 6. Now remember, to go from this step to this step, it requires a little bit of computation on your part also. And for that, remember, you have to look at the extended Euclidean algorithm. I put the links to that example, a couple of examples in the last video. I'm going to put those uh, videos also here in the comments below of this video so you can go ahead and double check how that is done so I'm just gonna say this is the answer and it works so the inverse of alpha is 6 so alpha inverse is 6 and I have to compute remember alpha to the minus m which is basically alpha inverse is 6 and m is 12 and this is all modulo 137 now if you go ahead and compute this and you get 22 now all these computations you will have to do it uh, yourself either use uh, some calculator or use a computer to do this kind of division uh, there and get the remainder so alpha to the minus m is 22 as we computed right here the fourth step and this is probably one of the most important is that I'm gonna compute this beta times alpha to the minus m x g for all the x g's from 0 to m minus 1 until I get the number that appears in the second row of our table now this beta that is here is given to us that's the number that I'm trying to compute the discrete log of and based at 23 in this case and this alpha to the m I know what it is and this xg is that goes from 0 to n minus 1 this is the for loop here step 4 if you go back to the previous video step 4 is the for loop of course, I'm not going to write down the for loop here. I'm just going to go through these numbers and uh, find all of these expressions here and see if they appear in the second row of our table, the table that we just found uh, in this step here, this step. So I'm going to refer to this table later in that step four. All right, so let's continue here with the step four uh, here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that. So I'm going to take beta alpha to the minus m x g now beta is the number 31 uh, alpha to the minus m we already computed that that was a 22 that was from a step 3 which is right here alpha to the minus m is 22 and the x g and this x g runs from 0 to 11 so i have to compute one by one and see if those numbers are in the second row of my table so I'm going to start doing that. So it's going to be 31 times 22 to the 0 because that's the first uh, choice for xg. And that's, of course, always this exponentiation is always modulo 137 or modulo n, whatever the n is in your case. So that gives me 31. Uh, that's not very difficult to compute because 22 to the 0 is 1. So 31 modulo 137 is just 31. You do the same. Now xg is 1, so it's going to have 31 times 22 to the first power modulo 137, which gives me 134. Now, I'm not checking this, but these numbers 31 and 134, they do not appear in the second row of my table. If I'm, I'm going to put my table here. You can already know the answer here. Now, 31 does not appear here in the second row of my table, if you double check. 134 does not appear here in the second row of my table uh, and the xg equals 2 when I do this computation does not appear in the second row of my table this 71 does not appear there you keep doing that uh, of course I'm gonna save you the time here and 
we actually got the first time you get that this number appears in the second row of my table is when xg is equal to 9. So when xg is equal to 9, I get 97, which I have it marked down over here. So that's 97. That's the 97. So once you find the number in the second row of your table, the one number that is above, that's the xb. So I'm going to mark that down maybe with some uh, yellow here. So the number here above, that's the xb. That's the one that corresponds to the baby step. So that's the xb. xb is equal to 9. And the xg is also equal to 9 in this case. Now that is a coincidence. They don't have to be exactly the same number. In this case, I got the same number, but they don't have to be. So in this case, the... Uh, xb is equal to 9, that corresponds to the first entry of this table, and the xg is equal to 9. So you have to compute both of them. The xg um, comes from here, from doing this, and the xb comes from the table. Now, once I have this, I'm almost done here. I almost computed the discrete log. So what I have to do is just remember the formula, and the formula is the discrete log, which is x, is xg times m times x plus xb. Now the xg is 9, the m, I already computed, that was 12, and the xb happens to be 9 again, uh, which is a coincidence in this case, they don't have to be exactly the same. Now you do this multiplication, 9 times 12 plus 9, and it gives you 117. That is the answer, that's the discrete log in base 23 of 31, so I'm just going to write it down over here. So the conclusion of all this computation is that the log in base 23 of 31 is 117, and this is all in Z star of 137. Now the context here is important. Context means where, in what group you are doing this computation. Now you can double check that this is actually correct. What that means is that this uh, 23, which is the generator, to 117 has to give me 31, that is all modulo 137. So if you do this computation, 23 to the 117 modulo 137, I promise you that if you do this, you will get 31, and that's what you're supposed to get. If you don't get back this number here in the middle, it means that you made some sort of mistake there somewhere in the algorithm. So this is an example of computer the discrete log using the baby step, giant step algorithm. Now, in this particular case, we use the group here where this number over here is a prime number. I'm gonna give you another example where this number does not have to be a prime number, but it has to be a number that allows this group to be cyclic. So I will give you another example in the next video. So I will see you in a little bit.